and watering your garden tomatoes with seawater. I just taste one of these tomatoes and I'm alive and nothing happened to me. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Our crops, and coincidentally our lives, are entirely dependent on plenty of fresh water. As the world population continues to explode, the issue of fresh water becomes increasingly critical, and the supply is threatened by, among other things, salt. Whether it's in irrigation water or soil, salt doesn't evaporate, and when it accumulates, it's toxic to just about anything green that grows. But last year, plant geneticists introduced a new genetically engineered tomato plant that can take salty conditions. As a first salt-tolerant crop, it is a revolutionary achievement. Crop irrigation allows farmers to depend less on erratic seasonal rainfall and the uncertainties of weather. But at the same time, irrigation increases the salinity of the soil. As it travels through rock and other soils, irrigation water picks up salts from mineral deposits in the earth. Salts build up in plants and disrupt the ability of the plant's cells to absorb water. Instead of going into the plant, water flows out. And when too much water is drawn out of its cells, the dehydrated plants can't survive. The result, once productive land, turns to desert, literally. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, worldwide, 25 million acres of once agriculturally productive land are being lost every year due to overly salty soil. Less farmland means less food. Add to that a worldwide boom in population, and the scope of the problem gets frightening. Here at the University of California, Davis, scientists are especially concerned. We are losing constantly land because of drought and salinity. In fact, 25 to 30% of all the land that we are watering right now, we just lost it because of the buildup of sodium. Population is going to increase. We are over 6 billion people right now. It is estimated that in 10 years we are going to reach 8 billion, 8.3 according to the UN, 8.3 billion people, and food has to be found. And for plant geneticist Eduardo Blumwald, finding this food means genetically creating it. He led the UC Davis team that recently developed the first ever salt tolerant plant, the tomato. To do it, he built on a theory of his colleague, Emmanuel Epstein, who points out that salt-tolerant plants already exist in the ocean, along the seashore, and even in salt marshes. There is no fundamental biological incompatibility between plant life and salinity. So let's use that knowledge and select and breed plants to make them more salt-tolerant. Easier said than done, but here's how it worked. How to create a salt-tolerant tomato plant. Dr. Blumwald started with a type of cabbage plant that survived well in salty conditions. He pinpointed the gene responsible for its salt tolerance, ATNHX1, and found that it released a protein that directed sodium ions, or salt, safely away from the rest of the plant's vital functions. When he infused this gene into tomato plants and overexpressed it, they thrived in salty conditions, just like the cabbage. Blue Mall's tomatoes look just like normal tomato plants, but they're on a special diet. Water that's nearly half as salty as seawater, plus a fertilizer packed with even more salt. Blue Mall's tomatoes have performed beautifully. The transgenic plants grow, flower, produce seeds, and bear fruit just like normal tomato plants. But maybe you're wondering, like I am, do Blumwald's salt-drenched tomatoes taste good? According to him, the answer is yes. I can tell you that I just taste one of these tomatoes and I'm alive and nothing happened to me. So it would appear they're okay. 
They have the same amount of sugar, the same amount of protein. They have more potassium, which make them even more nutritional. They have not too much salt. They look red. No problem. I believe they are going to find it great. But, you know, it's my opinion. I'm biased. Tasty or not, proving that salt-tolerant plants can help reduce world hunger won't be easy. The testing and the legislation have gone on for a decade. There is broad scientific consensus that food on the market derived from genetically modified plants poses no greater risk to human health than conventional food. Attorney Andrew Kimbrell, executive director of the Center for Food Safety in Washington, D.C., disagrees with the concept of transgenic plants altogether. He believes we can't know all the environmental effects of GM crops. I think most people are beginning to appreciate the fact that the irresolvable issue we have with genetically engineered foods is their environmental effect. This, this is living pollution. Once it's out there in a field, you can't control it. You don't know where it's going to grow. You don't know where it's going to spread. Even if Bloomwald's tomatoes are completely safe, Kimbrell thinks they won't do much to help the problem of world hunger. It's very tempting to think that technology is the solution to the world's hunger problems, but unfortunately it's not that easy. There's no magic bullet. Hunger is caused by political and economic policies that create widespread poverty throughout the world where people are no longer growing their food and simply can't afford to buy food. The real answer is in land reform and, and much more socially equitable societies where we have more equal distribution of wealth so people can actually afford food. It's that simple. Bloomwald, however, focuses on those who would benefit. A large part of the population of this world is not buying the food, is growing their own food. So for these people, there is no option. The difference is between nothing or something. He hopes eventually to create tomatoes that might revive damaged soil by soaking up its excess salt. The result, more farmable land and the chance for people to grow a wide range of crops for food. How many people die because of hunger and famine in the last two or three hundred years in the world? Most probably you are going to need seven or eight zeros after the one. But if I ask you, how many people die in the last 20 years because they ingest, ingested any kind of transgenic food, the answer is zero. Genetically altering plants to grow in salt water or developing the technology to make salt water fresh for watering plants will continue to be a major question and a huge challenge. But that's what it's all about. That's life. I'm Lucky Severson. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.